good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Influential You podcast. I'm Josh D'Amigo, program faculty member for Influential You and your host for this weekly podcast. At Influential You, we teach you how to take charge of your career and amplify your professional influence. Since 2009, we have helped thousands of business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs become more influential, more rewarded, and more you. Now, this month, we are doing something special because we're welcoming couples into the Influential Youth Studio for our month of celebrating the condition of life known as relationship. Each week, we'll be interviewing couples who have completed advanced programs with us at Influential Youth to hear how their relationships have fared due to their study of transactional competence here at Influential Youth. The first couple we get to interview that you get to see are Ron Sprangler and Karina Christensen. Now, you may have heard both of them on previous episodes of our podcast if you've been a fan over the last couple of years. But what I found out this week was really cool. They are the first and only couple to have done our entire four-year curriculum together. They started together. They ended together. In fact, I heard they took the final test together and somehow Karina scored higher. I don't know how that works, but Karina and Ron are the co-founders of Contigo Ventures Baja, where they develop iconic boutique projects in the Baja, Baja, California. We're going to hear more about that and more about them. So please welcome Karina and Ron to the Influential You podcast. Karina and Ron, I have to tell you, every time that I think about you guys in Cabo, I think, oh, they must not work very hard. That must be pretty lit. That's the life right there. Just coconuts and bananas all day and just sipping. And But what is life really like? Tell me about this venture that you guys are doing. Why don't you start? Yeah, well, actually, you just <laughs> ruined a perfectly good beach afternoon for me with this podcast. But, you know, happy to be here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no hard feelings. <laughs> okay, I don't feel bad, but tell me more about tell me more about what you guys are doing out there. Yeah, well, you know, we are currently working on a boutique oceanfront community on this beautiful stretch of beach called Cerritos Beach, which is about forty five minutes northwest of the Cabo Marina here in Mexico, and we are about to get started with construction in May. So Ron and I moved down here full time at the end of October so we could supervise the construction of our dream project. Yeah, I now, think and, and, go ahead, Ron. No, I think that's about it. It's it really is the culmination of a bunch of of a bunch of different things. And it's it's wonderful to get to bring together both of our unique skills and do something that we have dreamed about. Yeah, I love that. And I love it because you guys have both studied with us for a long time. And I can remember back listening to the podcast, uh, Karina, you had moved from uh, being a, a private flight attendant into being a realtor. And I, I know that Ron, you were working for a big organization. And then you guys have, have since then done a few big things in the Denver area and, and kind of that area. Would you tell me a little bit about what's happened since we've kind of heard from you guys in the last few episodes? Because I feel like it's been a massive shift and we could probably do the entire podcast on what's happened <laughs> since you completed. But why don't you tell me, kind of give us an update as to where you were and where you are now. Well, I'll start because my change maybe is a little more dramatic. I was, like you said, I was a manager in corporate America working for a Fortune 50 large company and had been there for a long, long time and enjoyed, loved what I did, enjoyed it very much. But it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't as fulfilling as it had been earlier. And so, so we, we were able to identify this where we could both bring our specific skills. I was a project manager for lots of big, uh, high dollar projects. I could bring those skills to the development world. Karina, of course, had more direct background in that world. And so she was the lead on the development portion and you know we were able to put together a wonderful team down here lots of really talented people we probably have what 10 folks or so on the team now and and really just you know let them run and do what they're great at so i you know i quit my day job i say i retired early from that world and and now we're down here yeah and it was you know, we started coming down here. We actually bought a lot down here about mm-hmm. four years ago, um, right before COVID hit. 
And during COVID, Ron was able to work from home. And I was like, this is the time we have finally to go and spend some time down here. So we spent months at a time here in Mexico. And by spending this much time down here, we realized that, man, we really want to live here full time. We had thought about building a house and spending the winter here, but we could really see ourselves living here. And so as we spent more and more time here, we came across this ridiculous piece of land um, about two years ago and um, were able to buy it. Of course, at the time, it was like, oh, my God, now what are we going to do with it? Right. It's a <laughs> big piece of property. It's, it was a lot of money. And we had to figure out how to do this. So in a lot of ways, COVID actually sped up our dream of living down here more, more, you know, more often and spending time down here. And it really sped this whole thing up. And, and Ron quitting his job finally gave me the freedom that I needed that we could do whatever we wanted to do. Right. So it was, um, it was a perfect combination. And um, so we, we were able to speed this whole process up and put a team together and, and build our dream community here. Well, and I, you know, Karina, you, you said something that made me think a lot of the reason why we were able to do this, a lot of the reason why I was comfortable specifically is because of what we had been studying and learning through Influential U. Over the years that we've been involved with the study, we've understood the importance of the, of the ecologies, the groups around you. So we built all sorts of groups around us that we knew we could, we could lean into for financing for expertise for just a variety of things that we need need we knew we'd need to be able to pull this project off so a lot of it really was you know because of the training and the and the environment that we built through influential you I love that for a couple reasons. Number one, everyone travels to Hawaii or somewhere like that and then decides oh I'm just gonna stay and then they don't do it. <laughs> But apparently, if you study with us at Influential U, you might be able to, is what I'm hearing. So yeah. that's a good plug. Tihi, we'll go ahead and put that in the best of real. I, <laughs> I love this, too, because you also mentioned a team many times in what just that first answer that you had. You guys have really realized, hey, it does take a team. The, the bigger the dream, the bigger the team. And, and I really appreciate that because it, it's a good example, a real example of what it takes to really make a project like this come together. Um, so now we're going to leave the business stuff behind because nobody wants to talk about business. We want to talk about <laughs> relationships. Now, you two, since the get go, I've asked you to adopt me and you haven't. So right here, why not? No, I'm just kidding. But we'll start with this. How did you guys meet? Where, where did the Ron and Karina story start? Oh, my God. You want to start? Well, I would say probably um, hundreds of lifetimes ago, but actually physically in this world, Ron and I met at a conference um, with another program in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I had been living in Montana. Ron had been living in Santa Colorado. Yeah. And uh, this conference met, all the participants met every quarter in a different city. And we happened to be on the same team in San Diego, the Colorado region team. And that's where we met. That's right. Wow. And now... When we were talking before this, because I love that answer, but I'm really going to push. I want the Gucci. <laughs> I want the good. Now, the good, Car the Karina, stuff. I said, was it love at first sight? And you said, yep. T tell me, Karina, tell me the story from your version. And Ron, I'd yeah. love to hear the story from your version after oh, she finished yeah. it. Absolutely. Well, it was the typical boy meets girl story. We, I was uh, waiting in the lobby. We had all just flown in and we had all organized to meet for dinner. Ron was the new member of our team that had just joined. Nobody, you know, I hadn't met him. Um, he came from Denver where most of my cohorts were from and we're waiting in the lobby for uh, Ron to come in. And I'm standing there with my group and there um, I see this man walking towards me with this huge smile on his face and looking right at me, coming towards me and as though he knew me. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of smiling back going, I don't know, why are you like smiling at me? Well, what I didn't realize was behind me was the whole group from Denver that he knew and he was smiling at them and they were waving. And so my initial, you know, reaction right away was like, oh my God, this guy like knows me. Well, he came up, he was wearing a you know, orange cashmere sweater. Fuzzy sweater. And he gave me a hug to greet me. And I was smitten, that was it. I was like, it's supposed to, I don't know if it was the orange cars me a sweater, but, but anyway, I was, that was it for me. I, 
there was such an instantaneous spark. It was on, you know, uncanny. Absolutely. And for me, it was, of course, the, the flip side of that. I was walking and I thought, who is this that everybody knows that I don't? This wonderful, outgoing, laughing, you know, I heard you before I saw you, which I love. I love your laugh to this day. And I heard you before I saw you. And then you turned and and because you must have seen somebody looking at me and I, and I saw you and your big smile. And I was just, I was just <laughs> so taken by you so immediately. It was really wonderful. So that's it from my side. And from my side. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hmm. Did we lose you? I think so. Anyway. I think we're live still. Okay. I think we've lost Josh. We might have lost Josh. Hmm. That was a good story. That was a good story. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of a great adventure. I know. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, well, you want to just keep talking? I don't know. It's, it's nice in the show. It's not as much fun without Josh. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. And I never forget when you were sitting next to me and you were laughing so loud during the conference and I thought that that was like the coolest thing ever. Oh. Like you were just, you know, mm. you didn't care how loudly you laughed. And that drove people crazy. Yep. Oh my goodness. So yeah. <laughs> I was glad it didn't bother you. No, nope, did not bother me whatsoever. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Hmm. I don't know what we should do. Do you want to get your... Shall I get my phone? Oh. What does I say? Ah, okay. You on? Oh, we're still on. Okay, okay great. I guess we're still on. Thank we lost you for the other. Letting us know. We lost the other side. <laughs> we lost Josh. Let's. Which I thought was funny because I thought we're gonna lose because we're in Mexico sort of... and we don't have great our... internet yeah, here at all. As you might but guess, there you are. our internet comes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're it... and we're amateurs, so we figured it was ours. <laughs> and that's the whole and that's the whole story, huh? You guys just fell in love and, and he was smiling at you and what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, the, that was it. Well, yeah. we gave a little bit more juice, but you were gone, that so was sorry. It. Yeah, we can't really can't really uh <laughs> repeat all that. So I love it. Well, I'll, I'll have to listen back to the episode to find out more. So Ron, when when you're sitting there smiling at her, she smiles back at you, you guys kind of just connect and then you guys start to like move forward as a couple. It, it was kind of immediate. So how did you get involved with Influentially You? How did you guys even yeah. hear about us? That's a great question. You can answer that since it, you found it. Yeah, you know, after about a couple of years we've been together, we, we continue taking these courses in this other program. And then we basically had attended most of these. We'd run out of courses. And mm. after about a year or two of not taking any courses, both Ron and I were like, you know, I'm ready. I'm itching for something new. We yeah. didn't know where to go. I was on Facebook. And I saw a post from one of my friends, uh, her name is Kristen Mueller, and mm. she posted about being in this Influential You program. Mm -hmm. um, she had been my writing coach when I was right. um, thinking that's about right. writing a book. And so I thought, oh my God, if she's in this program, that's <laughs> gotta be good. Um, I immediately signed up basically. <laughs> I was like, we're gonna do this. Yeah, yeah. And she, had to, she had to refer you at she the time. She did have to refer me, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And then um, and she didn't know me, so I didn't get referred. I don't know how I got him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you referred me, maybe. I'm not sure you vouched for me. I did. I did. Um, and it was really funny because I think uh, maybe at first you weren't so sure that it was going to be for you. That's true. My So I had a bit of an attitude about influential you at the beginning. I had the sense only because of a handful of experiences. You know, Karina was a, an entrepreneur and a business owner. Krista Muller was similar. She had her own business. Several of the people we met at first were in a similar situation. So I decided, I concluded, based on these very few limited facts, that it was, that it was really designed more for, for inter entrepreneurs and business owners and things. I didn't, and at the time, as, as we mentioned, I was working for a large company doing that. I, you know, <coughs> I came to realize the uh, sort of the silliness of that and and through what I got from influential you learned that of course I was I had my own business within that corporation I had my own identity I had my own brand to take care of and to make sure that it was presented in the right way all those things to attend to so I so I came to you know I fairly quickly learned 
that that none of that was true. It was all something that I that I thought meant it wasn't for me. But 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 that was silly. I think the most that that most came out when we finished the first program, and were invited into the second. And I told Karina, no, go ahead. You just you just go ahead. I'm not going to do the second one. It's more for people like you. You know, you go you go do that. Right. It's it's for you. And as soon as she was accepted, I thought, wait a minute, I've enjoyed learning so much and I've gotten so much out of all this. Like, I can't just let her do it. I'm <laughs> like, I'm getting in there too. So uh, I think I, I think I called John Patterson, you know, within an hour and said, hey, wait, is the invitation still open for me? <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's perfect. That's a perfect intro to, you know, how a producer needs to be included. Ron, um, let's talk about these personalities real quick. So transactional personalities, real brief. Ron, uh, you're a producer. Karina, you're a performer. Will you guys, in your own words, actually, let's do this. Karina, will you explain what a producer is to Ron? And Ron, will you explain what a performer is to Karina? <laughs> well, you know, the producers are the kind of personalities you want on your team when you want something done. They love nothing more than to be in action and, 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 and active. They have a checklist and when they run out of checks, they add more checks. <laughs> they just love to be doing and doing and doing. The downside of that personality is, is that they don't know where to stop. Like they, mm. you know, you've heard True. the word project creep. You know, we've had, I've had the experience where, you know, Ron is like, we could use a new light in the bathroom. And then we ended up with a whole bathroom remodel because, you know, once you do the light, you do the, mark, you do the mirror, then you do the shower, then you stop. Why true. stop yeah. here? Right. Yeah. So it's a fantastic match. It's a complimentary <laughs> match for me, but he can also really wear me out. Like, you know, oh, there's one more thing. Oh, one more thing. I'm like, no. <laughs> so good. Okay, Ron, your turn. And the, and the performers are, is a brilliant personality, which I absolutely love and adore. The performers, if you have an idea that you need to take from, from being a, you know, it's, it's an idea, it's a thing, but it needs to get out in the world. You need a performer. They will take that and amplify it and turn it into something that you never thought that it could be or would be. They'll have people accept that offer of what you're, what you're putting out in the world. It is remarkable to watch. It's like, it, it, it's, it's like a magician. I mean, it is unbelievable the effect that, that that sort of personality has on folks when they have hold of something that they believe in and are passionate about. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is the occasion that, you know, to Karina, the, the whole world is subjective. And so if she talks about a thing in a certain way, that's, that's how that thing is. When, and I, and I disagree occasionally. I'm like, no, that rock is still a rock it's so it's so a do, bookmark it's do, a doorstop we, do, you know. we do have those occasional conversations oh that's so fun and uh i i, I love that in, in many ways but one of the next questions that i I've, I've been asking is really this how has understanding your partner's transactional personality helped like does it help with the relationship does it help seeing things from their worldview and how, and I actually see John Patterson, my CEO, put in the chat, how has understanding those teachings on personality and transactional behavior uh, helped you relate? So I'd love to hear what you guys think about that. Yeah. Um, you mind yeah. if I? No, go ahead. Start on that. You go ahead. And so, <laughs> there was a conference maybe two years ago where the idea of how the different personalities talk and what they're trying to accomplish when they talk. And that was absolutely pivotal for me. The performer personality talks to think. So when Karina's talking, she's thinking about things. She's working something out. She has an idea. She's, she's trying out various options in her mind. She's running through a variety of things. The producer personality talks to do. So I'm talking with her and we're talking about all these things. And I talk to, you know, so I'm trying to figure out what to do I'm talking about an event. And before long, of course, she's got a hundred ideas that she's thinking through. I'm trying to figure out how to implement all these hundred ideas because that's, that's what I use language for. And I would just get exhausted or frustrated or just stop. I don't know, stop listening, whatever it happened to be. And so seeing that this was, that's just how she talks. 
And it's not, she's not asking me to figure out how to implement this thing, whatever it is she's talking about. She's just working it out in her mind. And I'm not being asked to, to figure out, okay, what are the hundred steps? Because as I'm figuring out step four, she's evaluating another alternative. And I'm like, oh boy, there's another hundred steps. And, and so it just really, that was probably for me, the most pivotal change in terms of, in terms of us relating. That was really one of the only sort of friction points we ever really had was mm. that we would, you know, you'd overwhelm me a little bit mm. when, when we would talk about the future and how things were going to go. Yep. Mm. Mm. And Karina, same question. Have you, have you seen things about Ron that it, this has been really helpful to know his transactional worldview? Yeah. And it, it sort of builds upon what I mentioned before, the continuous, you know, Ron has an incredible reservoir for overcoming obstacles, working through it. I mean, I've seen him physically do things that no normal person should be doing. He can just power through stuff, right? He doesn't care if he's sick or tired. If he has something to do, he's going to make it happen. And my biggest concern for him started being his health because he wouldn't stop even when he was sick. Mm -hmm. And I finally realized that if I can say to him, honey, this is not something we have to do right now, right? Not all of this has to be done this minute, this afternoon. We can start again tomorrow. I could get him to stop without feeling chastised or criticized, right? Because I was just concerned about his health. And that was for me, was the biggest relief too, because it really, really stressed me out. I mean, I don't have that kind of capacity for yeah. the amount of things you can get well, done did, in a it day and it would out. wear me out so because I, I keep going up yeah when you were done. yeah yeah exactly yeah. and so that was for me probably the biggest piece and and it just has made the world of difference oh, in how it, we relate to each other and it saves me consistently she's she's a better judge of when i should stop than i am certainly so so yeah that's really helpful to me too Good. Mm, so good. And I, if you're just joining us, I, I know that we're live. Uh, this is live. You can chat with us. You can ask questions if you want to. Uh, but oh. we're talking to Ron Sprangler and Karina Christensen. Uh, they basically have a story. The story is that they fell in love, went on a honeymoon and stayed there. That's my version of their story. But that is what you can. And, and T, we'll go ahead and put their website up on the screen. You can find out more about their uh, offer in the marketplace, ContigoCerritos.com and find out all about what they're doing down in Baja. Now, do the two of you now, and I, I, I struggled with, with this question on how to ask it, but do you find that you communicate better than other couples or do you avoid issues that maybe other couples that you observe struggle with? Are, are there differences in your relationship um, that maybe you see, uh, maybe you don't point them out every time you see them, but is there anything like that that you guys can point to? Yeah, we've, we've noticed, we've, you know, we've been around a lot of people lately, uh, socializing here, meeting other couples that potentially want to mm -hmm. buy one of our uh, condos or homes. And the thing that always surprises me is how much energy is spent on little things, in, inconsequential mm -hmm. um, things that couples argue over or disagree over or get upset about. And we just, you know, we just don't have that. It, I, number one, I don't think we've ever argued. Uh, there's no such thing as argue in our vocabulary. I think when we have different points of opinion, we tend to listen to the other, you know, maybe with a glass of wine or a margarita yeah, but, um, or two. Um, but we never argue over a thing because arguing means that someone's going to win, right? But we don't want to. We want to win together. And so the solution might be somewhere in the middle, not on my side or on your side. And we're, I'm consistently... Um, surprised how annoyed people get with each other over seemingly in inconsequen inconsequential things. And, and um, it's, it, it, I feel bad because really there's so much energy yeah. wasted on things that don't matter where you can then use that energy for the common good, right? Well, I think that's, as you were talking, it occurred to me that that's how we ended up here in Baja, Mexico. You wanted to live at the beach. I was like, oh, I get hot too easily. You love the humid climates and the Caribbean and all the warm places. And, and we found this place and I thought, well, wait a minute now, the climate here works for me. It's always temperate. It's never, it's never hot and muggy. And I, I was a little sheepish. I know I'm like, well, what do you, what do you think about this place? Would that be okay? And, and, and that's exactly what, you know, that's an example of what you're pointing to. That's how we resolve things. It's not a, 
it's it's not there's no force there's no there's just none of that we we come to conclusions together and now you know especially it's i think the the opportunity for friction has gone up dramatically uh i quit my job we started a company together we moved to a foreign country together to execute that project we're uh, together 24 we're 7 together 24 you know <laughs> we're together all the time i mean our, the contigo means with you right our, the name of our mm -hmm. company is because of that so it's there's a lot of there's risk right people mm -hmm. do that and their and their relationship suffers. comes apart suffers and and the opposite's been true for us i enjoy you more personally because mm -hmm. i enjoy working with you so much and respect your capabilities so much and yeah. it's just been it's wonderful so That's so, nice. so yeah so the the uh i think i think the toolbox that we've yeah built through influential you has well of course has made all those yeah, things possible. all the differences uh, yeah. well i mean clearly i'm about to like start crying over here but that's beautiful now i mean couples squabble couples have those little you know back and forth and those things and so it would be silly to imagine that you don't have any of those but when you do have something or a disagreement or you you have something where you're both trying to find an agreement to move on what are your strategies? What do you guys do? Tell me a little bit about that. Because I, I, I could believe it at face value, but I don't know any two human beings that always get along all the time. Is, is it, is it, are there little things that you guys see that come up? Sure, there are. I, 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 and I'll start. I mean, I think for me, it's just falling back to the, to the personalities. A lot of okay. what, a lot of the, you know, the ways that we're different are because we have different personalities mm -hmm. and different worldviews. And so, of course, from wor your worldview and the way you see and the way you approach things, what you're doing makes perfect sense. Of mm -hmm. course, it does. Yeah. And if I can just get inside your inside your worldview, your your personality a little bit, I see that, and I hope you think yeah. the same for yeah. me. Yeah. Well, then it was very clear. So when we first moved down here, so in my mind, countries have personalities too, right? Mexico okay. is a performer yeah. country. I moved to Mexico, every day is a party, every lunch is Mar Mar Margarita lunch, every night there is a band playing somewhere else and we move here and every night we're on the move. There's lunches, happy hour, dinners, and I've been dragging Ron along because I'm like, <laughs> we need to meet all these people, I have to meet all these people, right? Typical performer fashion. And I could see slowly the air coming out of this balloon, that's my husband, right? And he's getting like, you could, you could see him, he's dragging and he's dragging and he's dragging. A little more short tempered probably. Little, yeah. And, yeah, and I could tell things. that I was wearing him out and he was hanging along because he knew we needed to do this just, you know, for a project. And we finally, I said to him, I'm like, this isn't working for you, right? And he's like, no, <laughs> I'm, I said, I can't, I can do this for a short period of time, but I can't do this now. So we sat down and we said, listen, while we're alone and there's nobody here, we are going to protect our time. If there are people here that we want to entertain, or we really want to meet with, we'll talk about it, but we're not going to hop to every party that's in town, which, which is what I would do, right? I would go to every happy hour. Mm -hmm. And so we've been very, um, we, that, that is something we definitely resolved because that could have been, you know, that could have been um, a really, you know, a cause for some severe, yeah, that... serious friction. I wear him out and a tired producer, oh, nobody, it, it's nobody, nobody likes a tired producer. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, you can defend yourself if you like. You go ahead. It's it's true though. No, it's I think that's a great example of you know just I mean that was just Karina taking what she knows about how I am and applying it. And and if she didn't know how I was, she couldn't do that. If she didn't have an idea. And I think you know I think there's something particularly powerful about having learned the personality uh, distinctions and things together, because I think sometimes one person goes off to a, to a conference or to something and they learn an idea and they come back. So I go off and I learn that I'm a producer and I learn Karina's a performer. And I come back and I say, Hey, Karina, this is why you do what you do. You're, you're this thing called a performer and both. So just like, you should just stop doing that. Or, you know, it's easy to, to misuse information when it's sort of one, one sided, okay. when only one party. So I think that's another thing that's really helped because we've done the entire curriculum together. It's really been valuable, really mm -hmm. powerful.
Did you find that in the when you were studying in the curriculum together, you you matched aims, or you found yourselves like really thinking through the different aims that you wanted for your lives together, and so it made it you know more like a zipper where it just kind of fell into place, or like yeah. how how did that work for you guys? Yeah, and that's you know I found that surprising that there weren't more people as couples going through this because you are working on your aims on all these different areas of your life, and. Those are hard to do by yourself in a relationship, right? Or by yourself in a family. I mean, it, you can absolutely bring those back and then, you know, get your family riled around it. But we were able to work on all of our aims together. And I think that's, we, we originally had a five year plan for Ron to retire and for us to start spending time in Mexico. That plan ended up two years. It ended up in what, and then beyond what we had planned. So the, the, the time that we got to spend together on working on these aims cut down on our aims together and we were able to achieve them so much faster. I mean, it was so surprising when after the first two years and we looked at our aims and we had reached those that we had thought were five years away. Yeah, we were, we were there. We were there. Yeah, Karina's, yeah. Karina's right. I couldn't agree more. And it's a great question, Josh, because, you know, the so your, your, your primary relationship, your intimate relationship, it just drives so much of what you can accomplish. I can't imagine having a health aim that Karina wasn't on board with. You know, if we, I mean, we do those things together and it, it's just, instead of, instead of uh, fighting the, fighting against the current where we both have the wind of each other behind us and it makes it so much easier and much, just so much more efficient. Yeah. So. Mm. Mm, efficient. Good. I like, I like that word producer. That That's was really good. good. Mm. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us and you're a husband and wife and you just heard that hint, hint, uh, I'm pretty sure that they sent you this episode for a reason. Uh, but if you, <laughs> if you weren't paying attention, this is the real white Lotus. This is Ron and Karina. And uh, if you guys don't get that joke, it's because you're having too much fun outside. Here's what I'd love to hear. Some advice from the two of you for couples, maybe something that you guys have learned along the way that helps you, whether it's with influentially you or not, but you be the experts and tell me a little bit of what you think couples ought to do in order to have kind of a, a relationship or some sort of advice that they could use from your example um, on how to, how to connect aims or be together um, in the way that you guys are. I'd love to go and share that with you because the single most powerful um, thing that you structure that influential you teaches that I, I have never seen anywhere else. And I've been in tons of training programs, sales programs, you know, I've been in real estate sales and we go to coaching and we go to training. Um, I have never heard it that powerfully explain are the personality quadrants and the different personality, because until you understand who you are as a personality and who your partner is, as a personality, you don't you, you you don't have a good foundation because the things that annoy you about him consistently or her consistently are part of their personality it's and they are steady right and if you can get the key to um to understanding what the and um the the key to understanding how your partner thinks about certain things and how they feel and is their first answer when you bring them a suggestion always no and why okay. is that right you can resolve so much conflict so if you know i'm sure there is a module on our on the influential you website where you can take your your tests for your relation you know who are you as a, a personality i would take that if you do nothing else in life you and your partner take that your life will change yeah love that that's yeah. absolutely true. Just having that sort of perspective. Nobody's doing anything to annoy you. I'm producing because I'm a producer. She's performing because she's a performer. It's just, you know, it's 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 sort of built into the into the names of the of the transactional personalities. It's it's because it's what we it's what we're gonna do. So yeah, ah, brilliant. I, I just like it so much. I, I think for me, uh, it's it's fascinating to just kind of kind of see how you guys have worked at it and it's very clear to me that while you're constructing 
you know, these beautiful buildings and doing all that, you're also constructing something together in that relationship, that condition of life that you guys have agreed to. Um, ever since I've met you, it's just been the tightest, cutest couple uh, I've ever seen. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us on the podcast. Anything else to say before we go? Well, you know, you asked for a soapbox. <laughs> Yo, and one thing me. we definitely wanted to share was that if you have a partner and you're thinking about doing this project, this program, do it together. Absolutely. You have no idea how all of your dreams and our aims and goals will be um will be coming to you faster and it's also a hell of a lot of fun by the way heck yeah no it's you're absolutely right it is it's fun and and it does it accelerates everything doing it by yourself is powerful doing it with your with your partner is rocket fuel mm -hmm. so good rocket fuel uh, T, let's go ahead and put their website up one more time so you guys can find out more about the, what they're doing. At Ron and Karina are over at ContigoCerritos.com. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to take you out and say a little bit of what I learned uh, on today's podcast. Opposite. Uh, th now, they were about to give the, the end segment there. That was cute. All right. Now, this is who what I want to say. What they were talking about a lot was the transactional personalities. And you can go, I mean, we've studied over 200 different companies at Influential U, but we focus on the exchange. I don't need to know like the ins and outs of every single thing. I just need to know how we're exchanging. And if they're more subjectivist in their thinking, they're more an objectivist, they want to do. If they're more constructivist or in the story, or maybe they're a deconstructivist, they, they can point out where the dangers are. What you start to find really quickly is that when you happen to know or are able to put people in that way, you will leave the box open and let them be a human, but you also can communicate with them in a better way that the exchange makes it better and more possible to have the outcome that you guys are both looking for. That co-constitutive reciprocal exchange is so important. And we talk all about it on our superpower webinars that you can join anytime. You can check the website for the next upcoming one. I'm usually leading them. But if I'm not leading them, they're still going to be really good. And I invite you to find out more about your transactional personalities. We'll put a link to that at the bottom of the show notes as well so that you can find out which one you might be and how to communicate with others. Now, if you'd like to know more about us, you can go to influentialu.global and explore our courses, consulting, and conferences. We offer a four-year curriculum that you heard talked about today, and that's for those that are seeking an advanced experience. However, if you're new and just want to dip your toe into the water at Influential U, we recommend that you start with Thrive, self-guided training. Thrive is a self-guided program that allows you to learn at your own pace. Thrive members enjoy weekly live e-coaching sessions and an ever-expanding library of exclusive video lessons with our faculty, thought leaders, and industry experts. You'll get proven proprietary tools to accurately assess your career and develop a realistic strategy to achieve your aims faster including your aims in relationship. Your membership also includes chat access to faculty plus discounts to our transformative conferences. You can sign up today and use promo code 20 off. That's two zero O F F for a 20% discount on your monthly subscription. That coupon code again, if you're writing it down is two zero O F F next week's episode is with Trisha Tyler and Jeff Miller. And I'm pretty sure that you can't hear Ron and Karina, but they both probably just sighed hearing those names. We love Trisha and we love Jeff, and you're going to love hearing their relationship story. Thank you so much for listening today. Each week we stream live at 2 p.m. Pacific on our website, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, so you can easily share this show with others. You can also subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or any place where you get quality podcasts. Check out the show notes for links to connect with our guests, plus links to websites, books, or special downloads that we talked about on today's episode. This podcast is made possible by the Influential You staff, faculty, and members all around the world. Special thanks to our executive producer, Tyson Crandall, and contributions from John Patterson, Michael Teehee, Joey Anderley, Daryl Anderley, Paul West, and Liz Smiley, and a special thanks to our guests, Ron and Karina, you guys are my favorite. I'm so glad you're here. The Influential You podcast is produced by Influence Ecology LLC in Ventura, California. This episode was recorded on February uh, 8th, 2023. And the podcast theme is by Chris Standring, entitled Fast Trained Everywhere. 
And if you haven't yet offered a rating or review, I request that you take a moment, go to iTunes or your podcast app, and let us know what you think. This helps us more than you know. We'll see you next week on the Influential You podcast.